Welcome back to John's Films. Many TechTubers have a QNAP or Synology device that they use as an archive. But what they found is when they have a failure of a drive or a hardware failure of the device, they have to buy the exact same thing or else they can't get their footage back. Gamers Nexus saw this about a year ago. So I've got a different solution, and I'm going to talk to you about why it's better and has more flexibility. Let's take a look at it. Examining my needs, the Threadsmoker machine, which is my primary editing workstation, I'd like it to automatically back up to some sort of device that captures all of its historical footage. I've covered my prior backup strategy inside the Threadsmoker machine in another video linked above. But here, what I'd like to do is provide myself off-site storage. And I want it to not run instant replication, but batch replication. The core reason for this, if I were to get a virus on the Threadsmoker machine and it corrupted all my data, I don't want that replicating over to the Proxmox server, which is my solution, and creating problems. That's another reason the Proxmox server is hosted off of a Linux-based system. It's unlikely that one virus would hit both of those, though it is possible. So my workflow is have the Threadsmoker machine, edit on it, have some backup drives on it that allow me to archive footage, and then nightly have a pull off of the Threadsmoker machine that pushes it over to a network storage device for more permanent backup. Now there's a few things that I need to have in this backup. One is that it needs to have bulk storage, needs to have fault tolerance, and it needs to be low maintenance. I want to spend time making content. I do not want to spend time managing some sort of server situation where I've got a problem with storage or who knows what else. Finally, in the nice to have category, which for me is almost a must have, I want task offloading. That would be something like hosting DaVinci Resolve project server, I'd like to be able to transcode on the device, and I'd like to be able to host virtual machines. The virtual machines can run anything I have now in needs or potentially anything in the future. And then finally, I'd like it to be pretty quick. Because it's a nightly update, it doesn't have to be the fastest hardware in the world, but it would be pretty cool if it were. Let's start with the must-haves. The first thing I need is bulk storage that provides my backup. Well. I'm able to use the media server, which is a virtual machine I've instantiated on my server, to host a backup drive, and I've allocated 8.3 terabytes to it. You can see it's got 4.32 terabytes free. How do I set this up, though? Well, you come into Windows Settings, and you search for File History. File History is the new Windows 10 backup strategy. But what is this really running on? How did that work? Well. Let's take a look at the base operating system I've installed on my network storage device. It's called Proxmox. Proxmox is much like VMware's ESX server. Proxmox allows me to create multiple virtual computers from one base physical computer. It also allows me to create spanned storage drives across multiple disks. In this case, I've set up one master share off of a ZFS file system I'm able to then expose this media mount to machines like my media server. You can see right here, media mount. And the media server is able to use it. Okay, that's all confusing. Let's get to brass tacks here, John. Sure, no problem. This is a virtual machine called media server that functions just like your normal average Windows computer. The only difference is it's sitting on top of this Proxmox infrastructure. So this one I happen to use to share my media backup folders, that media share, and that's what you saw me map to off my Threadsmoker machine. But it also serves a purpose in hosting my Plex server. This Plex server I use for movies, which I've encoded from my DVDs as a backup and stream them across the house, and from TV shows that I've used an over-the-air antenna to capture. This is extremely helpful across the house as everybody in the house now knows the one place to go to get any media that they might want to see. It also allows me to jump between streaming providers if I want Hulu or Netflix or whatever else and not have it affect my base library and base uh, shows that my family's used to watching. The next thing I've enabled by building a virtual machine or virtual computer is the data getter. This is separate from the Windows Media Server this is where I typically mount my DVDs and transcode them so that I've got access to them across my network and they've got a secure backup. Now that we've seen that each of these instances is nothing but yet another instance of an operating system running on the same hardware, I'll show you two other types I've got. 
This one is a Linux machine that I use when I'm writing code that I don't want to interact with any of the other computers. Finally, in my Proxmox environment, I have a Zabbix monitoring server. This is an open source monitoring protocol that monitors every computer, every network switch, and pretty much anything else I want on my network. More importantly, it shows I've got a lot of flexibility here in my backup strategy and the server that I've hosted it off of. To recap, here's what I use for backup. I've got a Windows file history set up. Then I've got a VM hosting platform called Proxmox, which is open source, and it sits on top of a physical server. It then hosts the following VMs, one for media hosting and management, one that hosts my DaVinci Resolve project server, one that does media encoding, one I use for software development, and one for monitoring. This has been a fantastic setup and is something that I would recommend to anyone. Let me know what your needs are. Maybe we could brainstorm a different solution for you. I'm just interested in how people use these, and I love messing with this stuff, so I'm happy to help. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe so others can find the video, and have a great day.